Hey guys, I, I wasn't planning on doing a video today at all. Uh, I, I plan to put on videos, uh, put videos out on Thursdays, but it's it's been a bit of a rough haul and I know some people want an explanation about what happened and you know maybe in due time I'll talk about it, but it's been a really, really stressful couple of weeks, week and a half, and it's a Sunday afternoon and I'm just feeling a little bit restless and frustrated and as you know if you watched my first video you know that I left my job and my field uh, you might not know why um, ultimately I I have a long-term illness and it's an autoimmune disease it's, it's affected me for quite a while. It actually affected me while I was in school, uh, training for this field that I just left. I became very ill, very acutely ill, and, and I thought I was going to die, and that was really scary. Um, so by the time I graduated, I was already spent, already exhausted, and then I was pulling not just 24-hour shifts, but 36-hour shifts. And sometimes 48 hour shifts and sometimes at least in the last few months I was doing that weekly um, so I was working a total of s over 60 hours a week a lot of weeks one week I worked over 80 and in the last year I've started to develop symptoms of a new autoimmune disease because when you have one it, you tend to be ripe for another and so I've been experiencing symptoms of something new that we're not fully, um, it's not diagnosed yet. We don't know exactly what it is. And I've been spending so much time away from my family and not doing what's important. And now I'm in a place sort of where I'm forced to take a minute and, and start to think about what's important. And, and it's not like I don't know what's important. You know, when I became really sick back in, in I think it was 2015, I really, I thought I was going to die. I was emaciated and I was very malnourished and very sick and very inflamed and in so much agony all the time that I thought that, that I thought I was dying. And so I started to recognize what's important back then. And you start to think about all the things that you do on a daily basis. And it, you recognize when you have something like that, you, when you go through something like that, you recognize all of a sudden how some of these things are just so unimportant and some of the things that you concern yourself with are so unimportant so I know um, but anyway I my goal was to still work really hard and and make money and enjoy things and we have done that uh, I, I have accomplished every goal I've ever set out to do and that is something that not everyone can say every goal I have set I've done it all um, and my goal was to, you know, I grew up in poverty. And my goal was to not live in poverty. My goal was to live better than that. To be able to own a really nice home and to live the lifestyle that we feel suitable for us. We want to go for brunch, we go for brunch. We want to go for a drink at the nice hotel, we go for a drink. We want to order in, we want to buy a nice bottle of scotch. We can do all of those things. Um, we don't live a, an overly lavish lifestyle. We don't uh, do anything gaudy or flashy we just we enjoy life because life is meant to be enjoyed um, and when you have money you get to you get to decide how you you want to enjoy it and we've done that um, but now um, that I've become ill and it's become really hard to work in a profession where I make a lot of money um, we're, we're not struggling but we have to sort of lighten the load a little bit and so we are going to sell our house and that's been really hard for me this was my first house that i ever bought and it is it ticked off pretty much all the boxes and it's lovely it's, it's a little too big for us to some degree but it is home and <laughs> it's in the exact part of the area where i wanted to live uh and it is it is still, you know, it's a little too big for us, but it's still the size that I wanted it to be. And we can all spread out and it's beautiful and detailed and old and uh, a lot of um, history and 
character and it has the kitchen that I want, which if you know me, you know I love to cook. And if it were up to me, I'd be in the kitchen all day long if I could be. I, I cook everything. And that's my favorite thing to do. It's my favorite hobby. Uh, so this house has been good to us. And I had all these plans for when I had a good amount of time off from my job, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work on this room. I'm going to get this organized. I'm going to decorate this. I'm still waiting to find a really good large picture to put in my stairwell on, on, in between landings. And now I'll never do that. Now I have the time off. And I've been spending this last week trying to make this house look good for people that aren't me, for people who are going to live here that aren't us. And that feels awful. The reason we're doing it is because if we downsize, then the pressure is, is off of me to work myself to death into an early grave. And if I want to take some time off or work part time or just, you know, work in a field that maybe, you know, it work, you know, makes me money, but maybe just not as much like we can do that and we can still live the life that we always that we enjoy. We're outdoorsy people. We like to have fun and we can still do those things. But maybe we just need a house that's a little bit less maintenance for that to be possible. You might be thinking, wow, some first world problems. But if you know where I came from in the world and, and you know how I grew up, and how I spent probably the first 20 plus years of my life, you wouldn't be saying that. I've, I've come a long way and I've earned all of this. And, you know, again, we're doing this by choice. We, tack we could stay here and we just, you know, we don't ever want there to be anything stopping us from enjoying uh, life. And so the plan is to move. But then that got me thinking. Um, since we're going to sell, do we want to stay here? Uh, now we picked this town because it's absolutely gorgeous, uh, historical, beautiful, I mean, so much culture, museums, restaurants, parks, hiking, walkability. It's, it's really lovely. Uh, but since we got up here, uh, we've had a bit of a rough start just from the moment we came here, things have been tough uh, for family. Just we've gone through so much, and our adjustment period up here was less than ideal. So it hasn't really been everything that I had hoped it would be. And it's to, of no fault of this area. It's absolutely gorgeous, and everyone's friendly, and everything's clean, and there's so much to do. And you know, staying here wouldn't be an issue. But since we did move up here, we have been. Every, anywhere from two to four hours away from everyone we love. That's a lot. And as long as we were going to keep the house, that was, you know, all right, we're already here. We're not going to change anything. But if we're not going to be in the house, do we want to stay? No, I have a child and she's in school and she's got another year left of her school and she does want to stay here. And I got to be honest, I'm kind of antsy and I'm thinking if, you know, if I'm going to leave, let's just like, let's go all in. Let's just get out of here. Um, because we can start a new adventure. Um, so we might stay for another year or we might not. We just don't know. And sometimes that not knowing gives me a lot of anxiety. I don't know where I'm going to be in a few months. And that's, that's, that's really scary. I kind of like to be stable and I like to be chill and just be in one place. And I don't really like moving around. It's not something that I enjoy. So I'm trying to figure out where I want to be. And my husband is thankfully up for anything, which is Super. My daughter, not so much. She has family in certain places, and so do I. Um, but there's a few places that I think I can see myself living, and that is, you know, I'm originally from New York City. I would not go back to Brooklyn. Um, I don't like what New York City has become. It's just, it's just really unappealing right now. Uh, the crime has just gotten up, you know, has gone up. All the good restaurants that we used to love have closed down. It's just. No, I don't, I don't think I want to go back. And then there's that extra New York City tax. Forget it. I like my money. I like to keep more of it. Uh, taxation is theft and all that. Uh, but I was thinking, you know, maybe the Hudson region. Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then I thought about New Jersey. I hate New Jersey. It's an armpit. It's the armpit of the tri-state area. It's like a continuation of Staten Island. 
It's like a Staten Island, you know, turned moldy and grew like arms. That's New Jersey. I hate New Jersey. And I know I have I have Staten Island friends who are gonna hate me for that. Um, uh, you know, I was gonna get into my gripe about Staten Island, but I, you know what? The people who love and support me from Staten, Island, I'm not gonna do that to you today. Um, but the people from New Jersey, I'm coming for you. Um, jug handles. Jug handles are stupid and wasteful and unnecessary. And there are areas where if you live here and then there is sort of like a highway and then there's a restaurant on the other side of that and you have to get on the highway to get to the restaurant. You can't just drive straight. That's bullshit. And the traffic is awful and the roundabouts are stupid garbage. And the drivers, I hate New Jersey drivers. I hate them. And every now and again, New Jersey drivers come to where I live. And I don't realize at first that they're from New Jersey, but they're doing something unbelievably stupid. And then I look and I go, of course, of course. It's always Jersey drivers and Subaru drivers. And sometimes you mix the two of them and it's just a big cluster. You know what? Um, so it's highly densely populated in New Jersey. And the traffic is awful and the roads are terrible and the taxes are really high and jug handles. I've said that already. Um, and it's dirt. Like, I don't, why would I want to move somewhere where the taxes are really high? And, and the driving is shit. But I'm considering it anyway. For better or for worse, I have people there that I love. And if I've learned nothing from all of my life experiences, it's that family and friends are everything. And that while we make friends as we get older, um, and they're wonderful. I have wonderful friends that I've made over the last couple of years, and I'm so grateful for them, but we're busy. And you know there's nothing like friends that you've had since forever, childhood, and, and your family included in that. Because we all know that as we get older, our family do become our friends, a lot of them. <laughs> I think there is nothing like having an old friend that you can intrude on whenever you want. Just knowing that they're 20 minutes from home, 40 minutes away, and you can drop by each other's house. You know? So it's a consideration. I'm thinking about it. My daughter has family there, and I know that it would probably make her feel good since we've been so far from everybody we love. But that one, that's a tough pill to swallow. And then there's Florida, um, which, you know, totally random to throw in Florida. Everyone's fleeing to Florida, by the way. You could, you could browse the real estate uh, market for years and years and years, and houses would just sit on the market, and you could take your pick. I have been looking in one county alone, just in one actual whole county made up of many, many, many towns. Um, every house, every house, every house has a pending sign on it. Everyone. And that's not an exaggeration. Like, there is not a single house that didn't come on the market today that doesn't have an offer. That's ridiculous. So there's a lot of competition now. Um, things I hate about Florida. Humidity. This is Jew hair. This hair doesn't do well in humidity. This hair in Florida is a giant ugly poofy afro it is bad i get a jufro it's not cute uh i have to keep my hair like very relaxed when i go there and i don't want to look messy you know I, I whenever i go to florida the best way i could say it is it's so hot and so humid that you just look perpetually dirty i don't want to look dirty all the time <laughs> and i'm so white that 15 minutes in the Florida sun and I blister. I turn red and I blister. And I know because I have a permanent spot on my back from when I got a giant sunburn blister on my back. It was 2011, it was 10 years ago. Went to the beach, sat out in the sun directly for only 15 to 20 minutes. Back, I know this is way too much information and it's a tangent and I'm going off on a tangent, but I got this big black back blister that is now scarred and I had to fly the whole way home, sitting forward, and there was a 300-pound guy next to me who was taking up all of my seat. And he was really nice and apologetic, but because he was taking up my seat, I was like sitting like this and sitting forward in so much pain. And that was a story you really didn't need to hear. 
but now but now you know um so the people are hillbillies and i don't like hillbillies i don't like a bunch of rowdy weird inbred people i am this is going to come back for me someday i probably need to shut up now but you know what i'm talking about i mean florida but it has beaches and I love the beach. I'm a beach girl and, you know, no, you know, no income taxes and I'm pro 2A and I like the idea of walking into a gun shop and purchasing a handgun, a pistol and walking out with one. Um, I should do a video on, this is something I think I was already planning on doing, was doing a video on um, guns and uh, we, we actually uh, have filed our pistol permit application and it's still pending and so that we're waiting for that so I put a deposit on a Glock 19 um it wasn't my first choice but and this is you know total side story because you know me and tangents um but I put I because of the pandemic and because of Democrats in office people are rushing 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 to get guns now and so everything's sold out so it wasn't my first choice my first choice was um a SIG P365 or 320 compact um uh but I ended up with a Glock 19, so you have to put a deposit in New York State. You have to put a deposit on a gun first before you submit your application. So you can't come home with it, but you have to prove that you've purchased one. I digress. Anyway, I figure at some point I, I am going to do a video once I have my pistol and I'm going to go to the range for the first time. And I figured I would show you guys um, uh, what it's like for me to shoot for the first time. If you think that's a good idea. Let me know, um, but I think I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, anyway, the whole point was that in Florida you can go, you can get a gun, and you can basically leave pretty much that day with a gun. And I like that because I think girls should carry, you know, should carry a gun protection, great equalizer. It makes you and me equal. So you know, don't mess with me. Um, and I've already decided uh, what my perfect um, concealed carry is going to be. It's uh, the LCP2. I love it. But I have to shoot it first to decide if I really love it. Anyway, so that's what I've been thinking. Um, I have no idea where we're going to be living soon. We have to put our house on the market. Um, so we're doing all these projects. I hate every minute of it. Um, it's the smart thing to sell because really it'll just give me such, it'll give me a break so I can heal, so I can get my health in order and then decide where I want to go from there. Ah, uh, that's, I guess it. Um, I don't know. Have any of you done anything like this? Uh, we didn't make stupid choices. We we made the right choices at the time. But right now, I think this is the best thing that we can do is, you know, downsize just a little bit and give my, you know, just financially give me a break so that I don't have to be burdened to kill myself for a house. Um, you know, I, I don't know. At some point, I'm also thinking I'll do a video on kind of autoimmune diseases and living with one and how it all started. But uh, I, I know this was sort of a bit of a ramble, but I was just sitting in my living room watching things, you know, watching YouTube videos, listening to some music and trying to relax and I couldn't. Um, so I thought I would throw this out there in the realm of YouTube and let you um, hear too much information about my life and tell me what you think. I always appreciate the support. I always appreciate the responses. Uh, I have seen some requests, and I think what we'll do next Thursday is we will touch upon um, Cuomo and the Cuomo scandal and uh, the vaccine and you know people who are tearing to take credit for the vaccine and, and things like that. I, I think I'll touch upon that this week. So look for that this Thursday. Please like, share, and subscribe. As always, I am appreciative for all your support. Um, this channel helps me a lot, and it's something that I just very much enjoy. Um, if you want to be a guest, let me know. Uh, some of you already reached out and have, have voiced an interest. If you want to teach me how to have a guest on the show, I also appreciate the advice. All right, I'm signing off. Happy Sunday. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye.